Hi, everybody. I'm here with Dr. Shasnal Rathod. Did I get the pronunciation right? Yeah. <laughs> it's the first time I'm hearing this name. And uh, she is a pediatric orthopedic uh, surgeon based in Mumbai. She's attached to SRCC Children's Hospital, Hiranandani Hospital, and a few more hospitals across Mumbai. Uh, she has special interest in neuromuscular disorder mainly cerebral palsy, gait analysis, and deformity correction. And all of that went over my head. <laughs> Can you tell us in layman language what is... Yeah. I mean, I've heard of orthopedic, thanks to Dr. Neeraj. <laughs> I know that, you know, he's in that and you're in the same, but this is pediatric orthopedic surgeon. Yeah. So tell us what are all those fabulous words that I just read <laughs> from your profile. Exactly. So... Thank you, Rishi, for having me on this amazing <laughs> platform today. And uh, uh, yes, all the words sound like French and Latin to somebody layman or maybe regular. In fact, even it starts from my name. Like you said, <laughs> you heard it first time. And yes, yes it's very unique to me. And uh, so I'm a pediatric orthosurgeon. So basically, it's like treating orthopedic problems in kids. And orthopedic problems are not like what we see in adults, but for kids, there are different problems which come as congenital, like by birth problems. And then neuromuscular problems are problems which are related with the brain, like before the birth or during the birth process or early neonatal period, like the first 21 days of the child when the there's some problem because of some low birth weight or jaundice or different reasons kids brain doesn't develop and grow that way and what we typically in layman term label them as disabled or maybe polio oh, which is bad. not that term it is cerebral palsy so they, these are neuromuscular problems so the problem is in the brain that is neuro and the effects are seen on the muscle that is muscular so that's why it's neuromuscular so I treat these children for their walking problems. And that's the second term that is gait analysis. So gait means the walking of a person in a scientific term is called gait. And analysis is analyzing the gait. That is the walking pattern. So it's not regularly what we see someone just walking around. It's done in a, in a lab, which has very high definition cameras, which have uh, they are very high speed. The shutter speed is like more than 200 plus. Oh. And these cameras, they pick up some markers which are placed on the individual's body and uh, we can just chart, get a walking report on a paper. So just like a MRI or a blood report is on the paper, the walking report is on the paper. This is done for children who have walking problems, uh, for people to enhance their sports skills, and if they want to do some better things in sports, then there is a similar running analysis who are doing some professional running or marathon running. So all this is done at a gate lab, which is at Mahim. And uh, it is in collaboration with Marquette University from America. So we work very closely with them and um, it's a very nice thing. And it, pert it is pertinent to the topic today. It's like AI in human walking. <laughs> yeah, so it's a 3D analysis and um, people must have seen this in the movie Mission Impossible that how they want to enter some place and how like the iris scan, the gate scan is also particular for some person. Oh. It's exactly the same thing. Wow, and, pretty high tech. Yeah, high tech. <laughs> so, so yes, uh, I mean, the medical field is very much uh, going towards high tech stuff with the robotics and all this new AI and the new applications we have on the phone. It's like not the old time doctor who used, whom we actually imagine. It's like a very much new technologically inclined uh, medical professional people you'll get to see often nowadays. Wow, wow. Before we get into the chat GPT, can I just ask another question since this yeah. is to be very interesting. So in terms of with all these scanners and all of this thing that you're talking about that scan people mm -hmm. walking and running and all of that, uh, whatever comes out of that report, uh, as a pediatric orthopedic surgeon, um, uh, is the end result always, okay, so now we have to go for this surgical procedure, yeah. 
or is there something like no you can have this this uh, diet or medicine and see if it gets corrected or it's always surgery that is no, this no. so it can be like a shoe modification for oh. runners okay okay it can be some additional splint or caliper for kids who have walking anomalies and then it gives a more fine tuning for surgical decision making so there could be a surgery like a b c and this gives more information on what exactly needs to be done which part and post surgery which muscles are weak so this also gives a ground reaction force and it helps us understand that which muscles are weak and the physiotherapist can work on those eventually so it gives a lot of data it's too much of data actually just <laughs> yeah okay so normally do 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 patients contact you directly or always through their existing general practitioner doctor and then you get okay i think it's time to now go to a specialist like you who will then guide the, the patient accordingly what so uh, like whoever knows about this in our fraternity they send the patient across for this analysis analyzing the report is a tough thing like it's a different language totally so right. most of the time somebody who's trained in it like someone like me would just analyze and give some suggestions and some guidelines what needs to be done and then it's up to the surgeon ahead like how they want to take it Okay. Yeah. So most of the times there are recommendations and fine tuning of the decision making. Wow. I might want to bug you and do a separate interview with you about what you do. Then we should visit the thing. lab and we can certainly do after that. Sure, so sure, sure. We can analyze your walk for sure. <laughs> okay, great. But I think let's do one thing. Today's the goal is to actually take a look at uh, ChatGPT's knowledge base from. your speciality which is what you do and we want to ask it one or two different types of questions to see how good it is in terms of giving an accurate answer or you know so let's rate it from a scale of 1 to 10 where one it's complete crap or 10 it is brilliant or somewhere in the middle and if it's somewhere in the middle i'd love to know where it falls short okay So great. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, There was a news recently that Chat GPT passes the medical board exam. Oh really? Yeah, it did. So I, I medical exams that. is supposed to be one of the most difficult courses of most of the course. <laughs> and I come across this news that Chat GPT has cleared the medical exams, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> I don't know whether they can just clear the medical exam. I mean, we're talking of. I mean, it is it is the text part of it. Yeah, just the I text mean, part. Of course, but it's a matter of time when they integrate that into robotics that have great bedside manner and looks mm -hmm. pleasant and speaks nicely and listens to the patient. I mean, it's a matter of time when they build build all of that in. I don't know whether it's five years away or twenty five years away. I don't know, but I can see that that that's a possibility that you know, uh, uh, it it may. I mean. I mean no we kind of looking forward to that day when all of us are replaced with these great no, we are uh, not looking systems. forward to that we need but, the human touch why no, no. We... I mean I'm I'm optimistic in the point of view of okay. if, if 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 the machines do a better tireless job yeah. of that yeah sure. then it frees up human beings to chill yeah. out and enjoy heaven on earth <laughs> yeah, so we won't have to go to work We would have to earn money because the machines will take care of doing everything for us. <laughs> It's like our washing machine. <laughs> if the it can be like washing complimentary machine. with us, but I'm not sure if they can replace us or I mean that can but, be a separate argument. I mean, let's say yeah. uh, some of the things that human beings want to do always like is like oh I don't have the time to do this. I don't have the time. मुझे यहाँ जाना है देखना है मुझे I want to sit and meditate मुझे कुछ painting karna or something they will always never ever end up having the time to do something i think if ai and human beings move in a direction of let's use them to help us uh, live a sustainable way of life without depleting the resources of the planet uh, i think then it can be a heaven on earth for not we don't have to be replaced by them but they can do all the work like a washing machine does all the work i think you know but uh, sorry i'm deviating again into oh. this conversation but let shall we let shall we ask some questions to chatgpt yes. okay great i'm just going to share my screen uh yeah so i had a thought yeah. that um, 
we just asked chat gpt questions from a doctor's point of view a professional okay. point yes of view. yes and also from the uh like patient point of view like suppose in my field if anything goes wrong to the child the parents always try to search on the google right and they will always like many right. of the doctors uh, clinics you will find that do not come with like google opinions to just cross verify <laughs> with us yeah so. yeah okay let's do that let's try both of them so first one should we do from so a first doctor's we do a of... proper professional thing let's see how chat sure, sure. as okay. on that and then we take it from the layman's point or the parent perspective or the patient perspective okay great so what's the first question we should ask you want me to type, type uh, just tell me i'll type it in yeah, yeah i'm fast at typing okay so or is it very technical then you can whatsapp to me yeah so i can do it in the chat box maybe here or... yeah chat box i'm not too sure if i can copy paste though okay, okay. uh whatsapp would be awesome if you can otherwise yes. I'll try copy pasting this. And the same, I. Okay, so now I I've got your message on WhatsApp. I'm just gonna type it on my screen here. Okay, my child has been diagnosed with. Can I replace DDH with this or put it in brackets? Maybe. Yeah, you can put it in brackets. Okay, right. So my child has been diagnosed with DDH development, whatever that is of him <laughs> and is six months old what should i do okay great let's take a look and see what chat GPT says to it so here it says um, thinking <laughs> as usual sometimes okay if your child has been diagnosed with ddh oh to go with that <laughs> there are several steps you can take consult your, uh, with a pediatric orthopedic specialist your child's doctor will be will likely refer you to a a pediatric orthopedic specialist who can evaluate your child's condition and recommend treatment options. It is important to follow their recommendations closely. Treatment options. Treatment for DDH depends on the severity of the condition. Mild cases can often be treated with the use of a pavlic harness, yeah. harness, which helps hold the hips in the correct position for several months. More severe cases may require surgery, such as a closed reduction or open reduction. Mm -hmm. Follow-up appointments. After treatment, it's important to schedule regular follow-up appointments with your child's doctor to monitor their progress and ensure that their hip is developing normally. And fourth one is beware of the signs and symptoms. Even after treatment, it's important to be aware of the signs and symptoms of TDA. They can include limping, hip pain, and a difference in the in leg length. If you notice any of these symptoms, contact your child doctor right away. Remember that early diagnosis and treatment of DDH can greatly improve your child's long-term outcome. Yes. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to your child's doctor with any questions or concerns you may have. Okay. That's great. I mean, it is very pertinent and it was quite perfect. So for a parent who has probably come to know this, this is the most relevant and quite good information. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, some parts are a little scary, which could have been avoided. <laughs> and I think that's fine. Uh, the patients can always discuss it with the doctors. But yeah, for a layman no, who's not, yeah, this is a very wonderful answer. I think it can be nine for sure out of ten. Okay, great. So, do you have another question from a doctor? Yeah, so same now what we do. Suppose if it was a trainee who's training with me and I ask him a question and right. that person is not aware and they are trying to do a Google or Wikipedia. Uh -huh. Let's see if they do a chat GPT and what they get for it. Okay. We ask a similar, very technical, specific question for DDH okay. itself. Okay. From a professional point of view, so I have sent you the question. If you, oh, can. you send me the question, yes. okay, great. Treatment for DDH in walking age greater than two years old. Okay. Two years old. So, so let's try and share the screen and see what it says. Uh, treatment of you greater than greater than no, or is this yes. greater than is fine? It should yeah, understand. Yeah, older, two years yeah. old child or yeah. Right. Okay. Let's see what it says. The treatment of development. Okay, DDH yeah. in children who are over the age of two and walking may involve a combination of non-surgical and surgical interventions, non-surgical treatment, 
In some cases, non-surgical interventions may be effective. This could include the use of a hip abduction brace or orthoic device, which helps keep the hips in the correct position. Physical therapy may also be recommended to help improve muscle strength and flexibility. Second, surgical treatment. If non-surgical in interventions are not effective, surgery may be necessary. The type of surgery will depend on the severity of the condition. This could include an open reduction in which the hip joint is surgically repositioned or a pelvic osteotomy, osteotomy in which the pelvic bone is cut and repositions to help improve hip stability. Third is follow-up care. After treatment, it's important to reschedule, uh, sorry, it's important to schedule regular follow-up appointments with your child's doctor to monitor their progress and ensure that their hip is developing normally. And fourth is long-term outlook. The long-term outlook for children with DDH depends on the severity of the condition and success of treatment. With proper treatment, most children are able to lead normal, active lives. However, Ongoing monitoring may be necessary to ensure that the hip joint remains stable and continues to develop properly. If you have concerns about it, no, this is again talking from, I yeah, think you are prompted quite, it. Yeah, so it's, I have, would say this is like five. No, wait, wait, wait a second. Let us actually prompt it by saying, I am a junior doctor. <laughs> okay. Let's okay. actually, because actually that can you does do that? change. Like you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, can say that. Fine. I'm a junior doctor. Let's see uh, how this And I'm not passed out. What, what do you call a doctor who's not yet uh, passed out? Is that the I mean, is a ideal trainee. candidate? Yeah, no, trainee or junior doctor. A junior doctor a slash trainee. Slash trainee. Yeah. Right. And I have to... Uh, like, and I need uh, information to give to my senior uh the answer to this question colon treatment for one greater than okay so now let's see can you help me um with with the relevant information relevant information yeah, because this is a bit irrelevant. What it has just given. So the first point is like just yeah. indicate. So, yeah. so that's why because we are continuing from the previous conversation, it may not be clear. But yeah. now if I clarify that, hey, I'm a junior doctor now. I'm a trainee. And I need information to give to my senior hmm. the answer to this question. Can you help me with the relevant information that will impress the doctor, the senior doctor? <laughs> let's see what it says yeah. well, let's see at, at the end of the day that's the goal right if they do, because this is what the junior doctor would have probably written so he, now it says uh, certainly I can help you happy, happy to help you provide uh, so information now it goes present. there that non-surgical are not effective so you uh, see, earlier it was talking about all the non-surgical things like a bracing and mm, orthotic which are not done in walking children but now it says it's not effective right and surgical right. interventions are effective so, right so yeah. you want me to read this out or can you see it no i can see it and okay. i think yes take a look the at the rest of the text where yeah i said that it just the first time i said it needs 5 out of 10 yeah now it did rectify itself that right Right. Yeah, so, so, how would you rate this answer now? Can you read the rest and see? I mean, it's all technical. Think, uh, yeah. So, it has now just removed the non surgical part, which was correctly irrelevant. And then it has just moved that, however, it's important to have regular appointments with the pediatrics, same the follow up thing. Yeah. And if it's worth doing nothing, then diagnosis and treatment is important. Yeah. So, it's like just creating an awareness in the end. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead. But it Just has not go. given in detail the surgical procedures. Now, from a surgeon's point of view, it didn't enumerate the surgeries or right. the options. Right. Which it did previously. I mean, like the open reduction of the hip and osteotomy and stuff. Okay. So, 
I okay, think let's assume that this was the answer. How would you rate this? Do you want to probe further and see? No, I think if it... this was the answer, then again, this is five or six. Five, six. Okay. And if we combine I... both, yeah, then it could be eight. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Awesome. So good. Uh, we've got two different ratings on this and let people decide what they want for this. And guys, if you all want to reach out to uh, Dr. Chatnal. Oh, I'm saying Dr. Rathod is so much simpler. <laughs> I'm going to be posting her website details uh, in the description of the of this video below. So you can reach out to her and get in touch with her. Yeah. Doctor, so, thank you so much for doing this call with me. Yeah, thanks a lot. It was fun. And yeah. maybe we can catch up more for more AI related stuff, some other session for sure. Yes, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.